Hello guys and welcome to Walking Project. Today I've got something rather shiny called the HTC U Ultra. That's definitely one of the best phones ever made and I just bought it half price. Why half price? Because of the poor sales. And why the poor sales? Because of two things. First of all, the very high initial price of 750 bucks just before the release of Samsung Galaxy S8. And second of all, because HTC maybe forgot to pay all the big reviewers on YouTube to say good things about their phone, unlike other brands. So is the phone good for just under 300 pounds? Let's find out. If you don't know the specs guys, pause the video over here, check them out and let's get to the unboxing of this phone. And that might be the most beautiful phone ever made. It's not a coincidence that the codename of this phone was HTC Ocean. Check this out guys, that's absolutely phenomenal color. The other two colors available are black and white, but this one is most appealing to me and it looks absolutely phenomenal from every angle. We're gonna put the phone aside now and let's see what do we have in the box. This plastic cover over here, some spare buds, the HTC U Sonic headphones that are USB Type-C headphones, only compatible with this phone. Our cleaning cloth over here, which you're gonna use all the time, believe me. Some literature. Check the SIM ejection too, guys. That's extremely good attention to details. And what else do we have? Our charging brick here and the USB Type-C cable. And you might have noticed that one thing is missing from the box and this is the <laughs> USB Type-C to 3.5 millimeter jack because you're definitely gonna need that if you need to plug your high-end headphones. And thankfully, HTC is good enough to sell it to you for 12 bucks on their website or 10 pounds in their UK website. But it's definitely worth it because over this little boy here, we've got a huge duck inside. And I can report that the HTC U Ultra with this duck can easily match the headphone output of the undisputed champ over here, the Honor Note 8. No other phone can come close, but the HTC can easily match it. So let's have a look at the design and build quality. Now check this back cover guys. I can't really get enough of it and every now and then I just flip my phone just to check the color because it retracts light in a very nice fashion and it looks absolutely stunning. So that's definitely a highlight of this phone. And uh, what else do we have over here? At the back we've got our 12 megapixel camera, laser assisted autofocus, dual tone flash, the HTC logo is underneath the glass so no worries about scratching it. We've got one noise cancelling mic over here, our invisible 3.5mm jack, another microphone here, USB Type-C port, that's one of the speakers of the phone here. The second speaker is right over here where the earpiece is, we've got yet another microphone here. This is our 16 megapixel front facing camera. At the bottom we've got our fingerprint reader as well as these two capacitive buttons which cannot be rearranged unfortunately and they're a little bit down below so especially this back button if you're right handed is gonna be a little bit of a pain to reach but it is what it is. On the sides we've got our volume rocker here and our power button which is reached is very nice and clicky and the positioning of the buttons is pretty much perfect for this big of a phone. On this side we've got absolutely nothing is nice and clean and on top we've got nothing except yet another microphone and our SIM tray which supports dual nano SIM slots. So the first thing you're gonna notice when you pick up your phone is that the second display is getting activated showing you the notifications where as well as the clock and the date and the battery percentage. Moving on to the fingerprint reader, that's one of the fastest and the most accurate fingerprints I have ever used guys and I could easily give it 10 out of 10 attempts. Check this out. I'm very satisfied. So now let's have a look at the display itself. Check this out, that's my lock screen, you've got plenty of information going on over here. When we unlock it, we're gonna reveal this nice 5.7 inch IPS LCD screen, which is 1440p resolution. And let me tell you that the colors of this screen, the color balance and everything else is absolutely phenomenal, guys. I really like this screen. And let me show you a couple of wallpapers that I have. Check this out, guys. Absolutely phenomenal display, excellent colors, excellent black levels and everything. Just one minor gripe though, that's 100% brightness. 
The sunlight visibility of this screen is really good, but compared to something like the S8, I've compared them side by side, and basically the maximum brightness of that screen is equal to about 40% of the maximum brightness of the S8. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not enough, but it just compared to the best out there, is just not as good. Now moving on to the second screen, I find it very, very handy simply because I've got a couple of shortcuts to my most used applications. I even got notifications of them. Now the second one, I've got my channel logo over here to remind myself what was my name. So <laughs> the third one is my most dialed contacts. You can add up to five and basically pretty much that's it. I mean, for me, it's quite useful and I really don't see why some people bash it. The thing is, though, you can't really switch it on while your main screen is off. Even if you switch it off, you can see some backlight going on. So it's better for you to get advantage of the screen rather than to complain about it. Now, in terms of performance, we are dealing with Snapdragon 821 and I can say absolutely nothing wrong about it. The performance is absolutely phenomenal on this phone, guys. The multitasking is very nice as well. Check this out, how quick this phone is. I definitely like the performance and I don't feel the need of Snapdragon 835 even for one second. Now, what about gaming performance? This phone runs absolutely everything you throw at it with maximum FPS, guys. I mean... It's, it's, it's pretty much perfect in any situation. There is no point for me showing you any games because it's good enough, honestly. So now let's move on to the software part, guys. And I can tell you that that's one of the very few phones which I did not install Nova Launcher on top of it, simply because I like the interface, I like HTC Sense. Check this out. You've got comprehensive team support. You can change your icons as well. And everything looks nice, simple, and most importantly, is very quick and responsive. In terms of updates, I've got a couple of updates since I got the phone. At the moment, I am running, let's see, Android 7.0 and the security patch level is of 1st of July 2017 and I can easily say that I didn't find any kind of bugs to be ironed in the next update so I'm happy as it is at the moment. Now what about the software itself? As you can see the settings menu is very nice and clean. You've got a couple of additions like HTC Connect, personalized desk for the teams. You've got what else, what else, what else? Gestures. Now, talking about gestures, you got this gesture over here double tap to wake up the screen, as well as double press the power button to launch the camera. And you don't have much else going on. But anyway, let's see what else do you have. HTC Boom Salt for built in speakers, HTC Usonic. Now, one thing I should mention is that HTC is very proud of their, you know, Usonic experience and how do they tweak the headphones directly to the shape of your ears and bullshit like that. Basically, all they do is they give you some lousy equalizer settings, which doesn't sound good. And the moment you press yes, do the tweaks and this and that, it automatically boosts the equalizer a little bit so you think that they have tweaked the sound specifically to your ears which is ridiculous to believe in at the first place now when we have a look at the htc u sonic headphones they're selling them for 35 bucks separately on their website these headphones are absolutely phenomenal guys and they're way better than the ones provided with the Samsung Galaxy S8, which are the fake AKG ones produced by Samsung. <laughs> and, and as you can see, I haven't really took off the plastic because I'm not planning to use them anyway, but these ones are pretty good. However, if you want to use your regular headphones, like the Sennheiser, let's say, you're gonna need one of those adapters over here. But the thing is that the sound coming out of the headphone jack with this adapter is absolutely phenomenal, even compared to normal headphone guys. So basically, kudos for HTC for building this adapter with the building duck. Check the size of this duck over here, guys. Now, quickly compared to the one provided with the Moto, and this is the Moto adapter which comes free in the box of the Moto Z. Check the size of the duck inside, guys. Check it out, the HTC One is noticeably better and that reflects the sound quality as well. The sound coming out of this duck is way, way, way better. But let me tell you something else, this, that the HTC U Ultra recognizes only this duck over here, only HTC One. If you plug this one in, it doesn't work, but vice versa, the Moto does work with the Moto One, of course, but it does work with the HTC One as well. 
So yeah, as I said earlier in the unboxing, that's the only phone which is able to match the sound output of the Honor Note 8, guys, which is phenomenal. I would say that the Honor 8 has a little bit more bass, but this one has a little bit more quality, where the volume of the music is absolutely equal, phenomenal in both cases. Now, when we talk about the speaker, we've got our speaker number one here where the earpiece is and speaker number two over here at the bottom. The sound is a very good quality. The volume is plenty and it's definitely enough even in loud environments. But let me tell you something that it is not as good as the speakers of the iPhone 7. Let's check them out. Now what about battery life and recharge times? I'm happy to report that with just half an hour you're getting 46% of battery on this phone guys. One hour gives you 76%, one hour 30 minutes gives you 96% and with one hour 44 minutes you're getting 100% which is not one of the quickest ones but at least for half an hour you're getting 46%. And now when it comes down to battery life you're lucky that you find my channel because I'm one of the very few channels which are going to give you a real-time battery statistics, very comprehensive one instead of just saying, oh, the battery is going to last you through the day or maybe a little bit on the next day, which is complete bullshit. And I'm really pissed off when big respectable channels say that. So let me show you what I'm getting out of this phone, guys. Now, these are my screenshots that I've done after each power cycle. And let's see what do we have. 4 hours 11 minutes with 4% left, 3 hours 26 minutes with 3%, 3 hours 58 minutes with 2%, 4 hours 1 minute 5%, 4 hours 37 1%, 4 hours 7 minutes 4%, 3 hours 46 minutes 6%, 3 hours 42 minutes 5%, exactly 4 hours with 7%, 4 hours 25 minutes with 5%, 2 hours 46 minutes with 4%, 3 hours 14 minutes with 7% and basically these are the statistics guys, which basically says that your battery life should be between 3 and 4 hours of screen on time, which is not terrible by any means, but I have definitely seen better ones, especially the battery life on my Galaxy S8 is way better, I can easily get up to 6 hours of screen on time, basically with the same 3000 milliamp hours of battery. So basically, if you're a really power user, this phone might not be enough for you. And that's one of the deal breakers for me, to be honest with you, because yes, I have chargers placed everywhere inside my car, basically everywhere, but it's just for a flagship of this price, 3 hours of screen on time is a little bit lame. And now moving on to the camera department, I'm going to start with the front facing camera first. 16 megapixels, you expect miracles from this camera, but that's not exactly the case, guys. I mean, the photos look absolutely phenomenal and these are one of the best that I've ever seen. But there is a huge but over here. As you see the picture now, it's absolutely perfect, especially for the social media, it's amazing. But once you zoom in... You can kind of see that it lacks details. I mean, for 60 megapixel camera, there should be quite a lot more details over here on my beard. Let's check this photo once again. I mean, everything is in focus, but it's just it's a little bit fizzy over here, and you can't really tell that that's a 16 megapixel camera. Another grumpy selfie over here, and that's exactly the same case. Not much details, a little bit of blur over here. Let's check two more photos over here. Again, it looks phenomenal, but once you zoom in, it's a little bit blurred here. And over here as well is the very same thing. It looks very well unless you zoom in. But once again, for social media where you will be uploading your selfies anyway, it's more than perfect, guys. Now, what about the rear camera, guys? I'm just going to let the slideshow go and I'm going to tell you my comments later on.
As you saw on the slideshow guys, the photos looks absolutely phenomenal, HDR is very good, as well as the bokeh effect, you definitely don't need a second camera to get a nice bokeh and I really don't know what Google is talking about saying that they've got super special software on the Pixel 2 for bokeh, well actually on the HTC U Ultra released 6 months ago, you already have a really nice bokeh effect, so I really don't get that, but anyway... So I would say that the camera is just one level below the S8 where we are talking about the low light scenarios and on daylight is pretty much as good as the S8 which is fantastic because not many phones can achieve that. Now the only area which this cam lags behind the S8 is with the macro shots. It just can't get close enough to the object to get a clear photo. Check this out, I've tried to shoot this logo over here of the UFly and it comes out blurry, where just one photo took the essay to take the perfect picture, but that's due to the laser assisted autofocus instead of the double pixel autofocus of the S8. But anyway, moving on to the video now. Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. It's time to test the video capabilities of the HTC U Ultra. It has optical image stabilization, it has um, electronic image stabilization as well. So let's see how the video is going to turn up. Let me just quickly come around over here and see what's going on. A little bit of 360 <laughs> degrees. Let's check the sky here. Let's check the camera a little bit. A little bit of running test as well. So yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let's check the autofocus capabilities of the HTC Ultra. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good actually. It's not on the Galaxy S series or the Note level, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, that's alright. So as you saw the video guys, the audio is absolutely phenomenal as well as the quality and most importantly the stabilization works absolutely phenomenal. So again, it's almost, almost, almost as good as the S8 simply because the autofocus is not that quick. But definitely the camera on the HTC U Ultra gets my thumbs up. So where does it leave us with the HTC U Ultra guys? Pretty much you're getting the best LCD screen out there if we exclude the best of the best AMOLED screens. Pretty much the best camera of course if we exclude the Pixel and the S8. One of the best sound setups with this dual stereo speaker setup as well as definitely the best top of the line headphone output available out there. The Snapdragon 821 provides excellent performance as well. So basically the overall package of this phone is like on top over there. The only thing which might be a deal breaker for you is the battery life which is definitely not enough for me guys but if you're not a heavy user or you use your phone all the time in your car and you have it plugged in that's going to be no problem for you and the highlight of this phone is the glass back which you have to keep wiping all the time because it gets dirty very easily but this thing is absolutely beautiful guys and no matter to how many people and what kind of people you show this phone to they're gonna be like oh let me check this out that's amazing what, what phone is that people don't know so definitely it's a conversation starter now in terms of pricing at the HTC official website is 500 bucks down from 750 and on their UK website is 450 down from 600 pounds where I got it from is eGlobal Central, I got it for £300 and if you want the black one you can get it for £280 or something like that, which is the recommended method by me because £280 for this phone is a crazy price guys and I can definitely recommend it, thumbs up. So basically if you like my video subscribe to my channel as well, let me show you what I've got coming later on. The Blackberry Key one, I couldn't resist, I bought one, it's a little bit expensive, I spent a little bit too much on this one, there is no way to get it cheaper as of now October 2017. But I'm gonna have the review in the next two weeks guys, so subscribe to my channel as well and see you in the next one, adios.